But let's start it off here uh, with Kevin Hassett, who's been kind enough to come out and join us on what is a, a very nice Washington afternoon, yeah, by the way, nice. uh, the North yeah. Lot of the White House. I'm going to start you on breaking news because mm -hmm. Fox confirmed this afternoon there are now four Republican senators who would be opposed to Herman Cain's nomination to the Federal Reserve Board. That would mean he wouldn't have enough votes if things hold up like that. What's the, the reaction, do you know, from the White House? Well, I think that, you know, I've known Herman for a long time. I first met him back at the presidential campaign, and the president really likes Herman a lot. Herman's got, you know, ample experience in the Federal Reserve space, uh, you know, being on the board of the Kansas City mm -hmm. Fed. But we're in the process right now uh, with every nominee that hasn't been officially sent to the Senate of having them gather their paperwork and do it and, and send it up. And I think that, you know, senators should wait until the nomination yeah. is sent and they get to see all the evidence they before they though, make right? their judgment. These four, Kramer, Murkowski, Gardner, and Romney. Well, when they do uh, see the evidence, perhaps they'll change their mind. But right now, you know, it's normal practice at the White House for guys like me not to right. comment on nominations until they're officially sent to the Senate, and it's uh, pretty unusual to see senators commenting this early. Okay, it's also normal practice for guys like you to make plenty of comments about the economy, which yes, is what we right. have you that's what I do. <laughs> out here this afternoon. You know, your colleague Larry Kudlow, as he's known, um, had a quote I thought was quite colorful today. I think he was talking to the Hill, and he that's says, Larry. The, Fe <laughs> yeah, the Federal Reserve, he said something to the effect, the Federal Reserve will not hike interest rates for the rest of my life, meaning for the rest <laughs> of his life. And I said, I wonder if I have Kevin on today, if he'll make that same commitment. No interest rate hikes for the rest of your life. What do you think? I, I think it's extremely unlikely, uh, and uh, I hope Larry lives a, a long time and that both of us see interest rate hikes. Because in some sense, in the end, uh, if uh, we think about that the way the world works is that in 2016, people thought there was a new normal where there's low economic growth and almost zero interest rates. Right. And President Trump said, no, we can give you the old normal of 3 percent growth if we just get our policies right. And I think in the fullness of time, without talking about near-term Federal Reserve policy, if we go back to normal, then we should go back to normal interest rates, too. And that would require, you know, interest rate hikes of the future. For well, sure. it does bring up a wider question. You've been very positive mm -hmm. on growth. You're on with Maria earlier in the week, and I saw sure. that interview, and I've seen similar comments from you in the past. Is that forget about interest rate hikes? Why would you know Larry and even the president be advocating for interest rate cuts in this environment if things are as good as you're telling people they are? Well, again, you know, my job at CEH Hair is to be very uh, attentive to the fact that I don't give the Fed advice, uh, but well, I the think president I advice. give the president advice, and I can say that the signs of inflation right now are non-existent, and that's fully consistent with the way that we at CEA modeled the economy about a year ago, where we said that we could have 3 percent growth without accelerating inflation because we'd be having a supply shock rather right. than a demand shock. And so if you go back and think about the past times when the unemployment rate was this low and we got inflation, it tended to be because, you know, it was the Vietnam War and we yeah. were spending all this money on the military. And so then, you know, there's a big, big increase in demand that drives you up the supply curve and drives prices up. What we've done is shift the supply curve out to go down the demand curve, put downward pressure on prices. Right. And so I think that that Larry's right, the, the, the concern about inflation, and I think the Fed now agrees, uh, is pretty muted. Now, as I said earlier, I was here in Washington earlier today to talk to Christine Lagarde over at the IMF. We'll have the full interview later on in the show. But we got into this back and forth about growth. As you know, they've cut their outlook. Mm -hmm. They included the United States this time in their outlook. But as you might expect, we brought up trade at one point. And I asked her a question, something like, what would happen to growth if there were, at this point, no not only the U.S., but other countries' protectionist trade policies in place. And here's what she said. Let's listen. We would be certainly higher than 3.3%. How much? I can't, I can't tell you exactly by how much. People have been used to trade for many, many years now. And they've organized themselves. Companies have organized their supply chains in such a way that they can take advantage of the best uh, labor forces, capital taxation regimes, and all the rest of it. All right, so there you go. We would be higher. She wouldn't commit to a number of how much higher, but isn't that fair? I mean, that right. the president is essentially giving up some growth for, as he would see it, a wider, a greater good? No, I don't think that he's giving up much growth right now at all, at least certainly not for us, although I know that the Chinese people are feeling the heat from our tariffs. But the fact is that, that President Trump and Madame Lagarde are really, they, they share the same objective, mm -hmm. which is that we move towards zero tariffs, zero non-tariff barriers, fully reciprocal trade around the world. The fact is when President Trump got into office, and we documented this in the economic report of the president that I signed last year that many, many other countries on earth were you know, charging high tariffs to us right. while we had almost no tariffs on no. them. And so President Trump, I think, has played hardball, but I think we're seeing the results. Let me ask you one other question about another topic before I let you go. Or, mm -hmm. or quickly running out of time, but that would be immigration. I think we've had it on our show a lot. We had a lot of back and forth about the economic impacts of the president's immigration policies on the border and what the effect would be if you shut down the border. But the other part of it, which I think is interesting, is the president talks, he's talked a lot in the last couple of weeks about the country is quote unquote full. 
Mm -hmm. You know, over the years, many times economists, people like you, would say the more immigration we have, oftentimes that spurs economic growth. Mm -hmm. So don't you think we need more people rather than fewer people? And what advice do you give the president, if any, sure. on that, on that point? Well, I think that the, the president is absolutely uh, right that we need to secure the borders, and that's something that he talks a lot about. And he's also right that our immigration system is different from the international norm and that we don't wait skills uh, as much as other countries do and that we should have a legal immigration reform as well. Uh, the fact is that if you have more labor input, you get more output. Uh, but I think that the question for economists about immigration is, that are we, do we have an immigration system that increases the welfare of Americans or per capita income is what geeks would call it. Yeah. And, and I think that if you want to increase per capita income, then what you need to do is move towards a more skills-based immigration system. And that's exactly what, precisely well, the what the president wants to do. about merit-based yeah. immigration. And that's, that's right. what that's all you, about. And if you look at Canada or right. Australia, countries that have point-based systems, then they've had, you know, very, very high economic growth for a long time. And in Australia, it's, what, more than 25 years, okay. I think, in part because they brought all these skilled people into the country. But the final thing is that also part of the president's objective is to take people who really gave up hope in the Obama economy and were separated from the economy and out of the labor force to give them hope and bring them back in. And if you look at the latest jobs numbers, about 74 percent of the people that are new hires came from out of the labor force. Okay. And so this idea that we don't have enough workers, I think the president rejects rightly, and we're bringing those workers back in, and I think that that's about uh, his highest priority. All right, Kevin, good to see you. Thanks Thank a lot you. for it's coming up. Thanks for welcome, having us. Welcome to the White House. Oh, it's yeah, great to be right. here. Never gets old, right? Yeah, that's right. It never here. gets old. Kevin Hassett, one of the president's uh, top economic advisors.